as we are moving into the seasons for buying, and particularly now with a shift to so many people buying online, and with the upcoming uh, high sales seasons such as Valentine's Day, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, the summer markets, we want to present some guidelines for the sales presentations of artworks online uh, for the Poe Native Artist mark Marketplace. And what we've done is that we are giving a synthesis of what you can find online, which is covered under the Indian Arts and Crafts Act of 1990, which was also known as Public Law 101-644, which is a truth in advertising law. And that law prohibits the misrepresentation and marketing of Indian art and craft products within the United States. And it's intended to protect the artists and buyers from deception, fraud, uh, either knowingly or unknowingly, because that can, can occur that you may be listing something and may not know that by the omission of something that you are misleading a buyer. So we want to clarify that just a little bit. But according to the Act, it's illegal to offer or display for sale or sell any art or craft product in a manner that suggests falsely that it's Indian produced or that it's an Indian product or that it's the product of a particular Indian or Indian tribe uh, or Indian arts and crafts organization within the United States of America. So what is covered? Well, all Indian and Indian style traditional and contemporary arts and crafts produced after 1934, uh, that it broadly applies to the marketing of arts and crafts by any person in the United States if they are going to label it Indian. And there still is a lot of copying that's being done, a lot of appropriation by non-Indians of Indian style jewelry, pottery, baskets, carved stone fetishes, woven rugs, gachina dolls, clothing, um, things that... Uh, may say Indian on the label, but were not produced by Indians. And what it might actually be is Indian inspired, for example, um, which is a form of appropriation. Uh, but people still think that it's made by Indians, particularly if they are uninformed about the act, or they might be newbies um, to the Indian arts market. So we ask that we have disclosure of ethnicity or tribe, um, that it's actually stated to avoid misleading buyers. And this means that it's illegal to market art or craft work that's using the name of a tribe if the member or a certified uh, Indian artisan of that tribe did not actually create that art or craft work. So if you're labeling it made by an Indian and it wasn't made by an Indian, um, it's illegal. It's also illegal to sell, for example, jewelry that's labeled as Indian jewelry um, if the jewelry wasn't produced by someone who's not a member or a certified Indian artist of an Indian tribe. Or if we take it even to more further or granular detail, selling something as Navajo jewelry violates the law if it wasn't produced by someone who's a Navajo. So it goes into pretty specific details about determining and disclosing the nature as well as the tribal affiliation of the object and the people who are making it. We think it's also important to disclose the materials. Uh, so we ask that people note the materials that are used in the creation of the work. For example, there's a, distinguish, or a distinction, including the firing process between something that was a slip or bisque pottery and traditional coiled pottery and whether it's been kiln fired or uh, pit fired or traditionally fired for example in pottery or in rugs or textiles there is a distinction between cotton wool including the kind of wool that's being used and whether it's synthetic yarn and even right down to if it's hand spun or multiply or machine applied yarns that are being used in weaving there's a distinction in jewelry materials, such as metals. So if you have silver, sterling silver, or 
a really, we'll say, diluted silver alloy, you need to um, disclose this because sometimes people can look at something that's been made with nickel, for example, or nickel silver and think that it's silver. Or in stone, is it turquoise? Is it Chinese turquoise? Or for that matter, is it uh, stabilized turquoise? Or is it plastic that has been dyed? Or is it stone that's been dyed? This often occurs with lapis too. Or things that come from the ocean, such as coral, um, and whether the coral has been dyed. So we need to be clear in the materials uh, that are being used um, and a distinction between whether it's the original coral or is it dyed coral or so is it a replacement or alternative material that's being used instead of turquoise someone's using plastic that's been dyed a turquoise color an unschooled person who is new to buying native american art or jewelry may not recognize the difference it's important to be aware that uh, we are truthful in the methods and materials that are being used and that we disclose it all because we may be deceiving someone through omission based on us not saying something some someone believes uh, what their mind fills in so they see jewelry and it's and it's an american indian icon or image so they automatically assume for example that it's american indian jewelry or if it's shiny they automatically assume that it's silver so we're asking that people be very specific, right down to those most minute details in the, the works that they show online in the artist marketplace. And if you need more information about the uh, act itself, here's the website you can visit. And then you can always uh, talk to us through our Facebook page um, if there are other questions that you have that you need answered. Uh, we thank you for your attention to this because the idea is to reinforce the integrity, the trust, and the excellence of the work that we all do at the Cultural Center as well as the people who we represent.